Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey guys, we are on the border of Costa Mesa and Newport Beach. I used to live like right behind those trees. There's like a cool little condo space. JP took me on this fun little bike ride from their headquarters here. How you doing, buddy? Good, good. How you doing? I'm great, man. Excellent. It's fun to check out your, your latest and greatest, okay? Because we've got the Sierra Sport. Yes. And I've looked at the Sierra before. It's like $17.25 or something, price point. That's right, yeah. This one, $19.95. The big difference being that it has these awesome cast alloy wheels. So if you weigh a little bit more and you've experienced spokes kind of coming loose over time, these really never go loose. They don't go out of true. They're really sturdy. And apparently, you know, being kind of close to the beach would actually go surfing out that way. I don't know, was that Newport? And I, in the Newport and Huntington Beach kind of come right together, right that direction there. Beautiful so, spot. Yeah. You could ride a bike like this to the beach, lock it up, but the salt water and stuff can kind of corrode uh, steel spokes. That's what they're usually made out yes. of, stainless uh -huh. steel. That's, that's a fact. Okay, mm -hmm. good to know. So that's a nice little upgrade. The other upgrade that we were talking about um, on this bike, I'm trying to remember. What was the... What's oh, it's the, the RST, uh, RST shop. Oh, it's kind of hidden. Here. I was like, yeah. I was looking at the saddle because we talked about a comfort upgrades and this this the other big comfort upgrade. So instead of having a rigid fork, this one has the RST guide. It's got about 63 millimeters of travel. I'm just kind of guessing on that because um, a lot of times you'll see the silver that's exposed, but the, the bottom doesn't necessarily slide all the way up. And this is a fairly adjustable fork. I like that it's got thicker stanchions. I think there's like 32 millimeter. It's extra wide. It's designed specifically for a fat tire like this. These are 20 by four inch. So extra wide gives you lots of float and traction, which we'll talk about in a bit, but they have preload adjust and they have lockout here. So this is nice. I mean, it's a hydraulic lockout. It's a spring fork. There's a little bit of extra weight that's added be be between the you know cast wheels and the suspension fork on this bike. We were talking about, it weighs about 73.3 pounds. Oh, uh, that's right. Right, and then the battery pack being internal, to the frame right here. We can kind of see it because the bike's all folded up. That is removable, weighs about 5.5 pounds. So if you're someone who has an RV or a boat or something like this, and you like to get out on the trails when you park and explore different areas, this would be an awesome bike because you can kind of take on anything. That's great. You can get it out. You can get it out in the dirt, you can get it on the grass, and you can take it on the concrete as well. So. And not just that, yeah. but even sand. Like I took a couple of bikes like this down to Mexico at one point and even the soft sand, I, I took the air pressure way down. The The range is like five to 30. And if you actually go to five, that tire spreads out real nice and it gives you a good amount of float. Same thing with snow, you know, powder, you can't float on powder, but but some of the crustier snow, you can actually get some traction. And these tires, they were a nice upgrade here. We got the Crusades and they've got this KS that stands for like K-Shield. So it's puncture protection, the nice knobs. But then we were back at the at the factory a minute ago or at your headquarters. I wanna cut to that. Let's just show what, what we discovered back there. Hey guys, we're back in the warehouse at Elux. Thought this was kind of a cool shot. And we got JP hanging out. How are you doing, buddy? Hey, good. How you doing, Gord? Great, man. It's All nice right. to see these uh, spare parts up close. This is the two amp charger. It weighs about a pound and a half. Um, and I think this is kind of the same charger as some of your other bikes. Uh, yes, it is. It's the same as the Newport and uh, the Malibu Sport. Very cool. So, yeah. Got the little warranty magazine thing in there. And you guys have like a year long comprehensive warranty here. Yes, we do. It's a uh, year long front to back. And then the battery is uh, first year is uh, completely covered and second, third year we prorate it. So. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Well, one of the things we were talking about earlier is how these have, you know, the cool knobby tires. You can go off road with these uh, Crusade KS. So that's like K shield or puncture protection going on. Yes, that's correct. That's nice. Yeah. And you know, really cool bike with the cast wheels, really strong. They're not going to go out of true or anything if you do go off road you got the suspension but if you're someone who wants to be on road you've got this optional tire so this is like the v tire company speedster and it's a little bit it's got that nice slick patch down the center and still got a little bit of grip going on is that right yes it does it's got a really good sticky compound on it too so it feels really good on the road and it channels uh channels water away nice as well that's so, awesome yeah. so you guys will have these on your website and we're gonna have those available probably in about a month from now so okay. yeah that's we'll... fantastic man nice yeah. to see some of the other colors here we were out there with this kind of the satin or matte gun metal we got the red and here's some of the other colors for for other bikes in their lineup and just a really 
Yeah, nice, beautiful, beautiful shop here. So you do stock a bunch of accessories and some of the, the parts for if people need support? That's correct, yes. We wanna, we keep uh, tons of parts here on hand. That way, if anybody has any kind of an issue, we can address it right away, mm. so. And nice stands and everything. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Isn't that cool? Really like those tires uh, we were looking at. And now I, you know, we've got the bike all folded up here. Would you mind unfolding it and I can yeah. just kind of narrate? Okay. So, yeah, I love the, the the color on this one here. They've got a few different colors. This one is glossy red, but they have this like kind of satin gunmetal and that glossy gunmetal and then matte black. Is that right? That's correct. That's right. So he's folded the center point here and it's got a little lock. He's folded that stem and it is telescoping. So you've got a decent range. You can raise it a little bit. This bike only comes in one frame size, but with that adjustment and also the seat post, this is 350 millimeters. You've got a lot of kind of, you know, range and options, whether you want to lean forward or be more upright. So I really appreciate that. You know, thinking about maybe a petite woman who's standing over this or a larger man or vice versa. You know, we got those tall girls out there too, but that's sort of the traditional uh, take. A lot of women that I, I've met, they they look at the full size fat tire bikes with the high step bar, and then they kind of gravitate towards the smaller folding bikes just because they are more approachable like this. I do want to highlight though that with that big joint right there, if you're pedaling, you know, and you jump off, you could kind of knock your knee into that. I actually had that happen with an ex-girlfriend. Oh, is that right? She was not happy about Ooh. that. I know, I know. <laughs> and yet the flip side is with a heavy duty bike like this with a really powerful drive system, you want a heavy duty hinge you want a heavy duty folding point with that nice little lock so this is just me calling things out we've got this extra tubing right here it's not exactly a gusset but it acts like just another frame support look at these big welds so that's heavy duty it can handle the extra forces and the extra weight of a fat tire bike uh, and it acts as a handle so when you're folding it a minute ago you saw jp doing that it's it's extra thick also the seat tube extra thick and the post is 31.8 millimeters right here and the saddle, I like this one. This is Selly Royale. It's a pretty comfortable saddle. It's not quite as big and luxurious as we see over here. This is like a cruiser saddle. This is the Newport, one of their other bikes I've reviewed in the past. It's got that rear rack battery with a nice integrated light. Got a few upgrades in recent years with the hydraulic disc brakes and stuff, integrated headlight, paint match fenders. Again, I reviewed this a while back. They've got another bike that just came out. It's the Malibu and they move the battery from that rear rack to kind of the down tube or yeah, I guess that is the down tube position. That's correct. Lots yes. of cool stuff. And all of this is kind of nature, cruiser, comfort oriented. Definitely. What, all... what can we do to make this more comfortable? That's what I'm thinking. Uh, what, what do you, well, got any there options? are a couple things you can do with this bike. Uh, one is you could uh, use an integrated uh, NCX seat post mm -hmm. and uh, a surface uh, gel seat. Uh, you could you can upgrade to those for about 160 dollars and okay. that's what's on uh, our other sport bikes and gt bikes so you could you could step it up one more one more notch there and get a little bit more cushion in the seat which is really nice excellent got a little bit more cushion i like that and then check out this rack comes with that so it's really nice it's got a nice big platform up top says max 25 kilograms that's roughly 55 pounds and then this like bowed out pannier hanger so that's standard gauge tubing it's going to fit some of those panniers I'm, i keep calling them panniers or whatever and everyone says that's indian food you can't, you're saying it wrong <laughs> i'm sorry guys i'm doing my best thank you so yeah trunk bag or some panniers and stuff i love that the fenders are paint match these are aluminum alloy a lot of the other fenders on some of their products are steel which steel tends to be very sturdy and quiet. It's not gonna get bent out of shape as easily. However, if it gets scratched, it can kind of rust and stuff. So on the folding model, I actually don't mind that these are aluminum alloy because you saw it folded a minute ago. This bike doesn't have like a magnet, a magnet, you'd have to have a really powerful magnet to keep it folded. It doesn't have like a bungee attachment or something like that. So I would consider getting a strap, a Velcro strap or a bungee aftermarket just at Walmart or something and put a towel between the frame so it doesn't get nicked up. But even if it does, the whole frame is aluminum alloy. So you're really not, you're not as at much risk. Yeah, that's right. With that. So some of the other highlights on this, we've got these locking rubber ergonomic grips. Appreciate that. It's going to keep your hands and your wrists from getting tingly. Four finger Tektro mechanical brake levers. They have that nice rubberized edge, really comfortable. And that fun built-in bell. I really like that. They went with the big kind of oversized thumb shifter, which I've complained about in the past. I'm like, why does everyone use that? But then I realized it allows you to put the throttle on the right hand side because normal trigger shifters, they're down low and then 
the the throttle kind of collides it gets a little crowded so you know the other thing is if you're wearing gloves and you're out in that snowy environment or something this is a little bit bigger and it's not quite as precision oriented the drivetrain right here is one step up from entry on the Shimano component group set. It's Shimano Altus, okay? And then the, the cassette is 14 to 28 tooth, which is a kind of a, you know, it's a more limited range than like a full-size mountain bike. But the motor on this thing, I think we were saying, is that 500 to 500 to 900, 900? Uh -huh. yeah that's that's pretty intense especially when you combine it with like a smaller wheel diameter so the advantages of a smaller wheel is that it makes the bike more approachable lower standover height they're really sturdy compared to like a, a bigger wheel that can kind of you know flex and stuff a little bit and especially with that those like arms on those cast wheels there's just a this a sturdy sturdy bike and then it gives the motor and the brakes a mechanical advantage so coming back to those brake levers both of them have motor inhibitors and the disc brake rotors are 180 millimeters which is in my opinion i mean that's that's right on or maybe even overkill because the wheel size is so much smaller coming back to that 73.3 pounds though good to have those larger brakes compared to some of your other models that are a little more pricey and kind of city oriented the mechanical brakes you can tune up yourself a little bit easier than hydraulic but you get some cable stretch it requires a little bit more hand strength so i like that they went with the four finger you know rubberized levers um any call out on that i mean you know we did go from the regular sierra to the sierra sport did you debate putting on hydraulic brakes what was the thinking yeah we could we were thinking about doing hydraulic brakes but the we were trying to keep the cost below two thousand yeah. dollars and if we if we went with hydraulic brakes then we we're going to have to bring the price up a little bit on the bikes maybe another 100 150 dollars so okay you know and yeah. again not bad it's it's sort of easier to tune up for that's the i'm, I'm rationalizing it here there's always a trade-off and you know they get the job done but they, they went the right way safety wise and both of them have motor inhibitors this bike uses a 12 magnet sealed cadence sensor down here really nice especially if the bike gets muddy or if it's been folded and bonked around a little bit in your car so i, I like that they did that it's not the big older style discs with the physical magnets you can see this one's like a little bit more compact and then they've got that variable speed trigger throttle i kind of like trigger throttles because if you're bouncing around on a trail you know a twist throttle you can kind of get bounced around and especially I've I've had moments where I was a little bit afraid and I kind of like squeezed and then I twisted I went even faster you mm -hmm. know and whereas a trigger throttle you just you can kind of take your hands off and the bike will stop again both brake levers override the motor and that's a nice little there's just something worth calling out so we've talked about the nice saddle we talked about the rear rack the optional suspension seat post s short sun tour ncx and then we've got a chain guide check this out it says plastic so it's really nice that they have an aluminum alloy like strut right here but and that actually might be steel i don't know but um i can't tell i don't have my magnet i'm sorry guys i should check those more frequently i've seen derail your guards back here they're usually steel and they look very similar in this case these cables are also a little bit more vulnerable you want to be careful when it's folded if they ship it to you or if it's in your rv just so you don't snag that motor power cable or the the shifter line um, and while we're looking at this altus i like that it has a barrel adjuster here so if you turn to the left over time you know that's a way to kind of compensate for cable stretch so the barrel adjusters are nice you don't need any tools you can just fiddle with that a little bit and ride it and see how it responds but the chain guide is going to keep that chain from bouncing off track when you're going off road so you got the suspension you've got that comfort you got the big tires you can adjust the tire pressure that's all well and good but you know if the chain falls off you still have throttle override so that's another really cool thing and this bike does have throttle at zero and full power override at any of the levels of assist so for me going on the beach like when i was in mexico it gets hard to get started and you're trying to pedal and balance but if this bike you can just sit down press that throttle and the bike will it'll kind of carry you forward yeah it'll take you take you right away i like that so. yeah i really i really like this setup you guys i mean this has been a really popular style of bike the fat tires the folding makes it kind of versatile it is heavy but take that battery out if you're going to put it on a, a bike rack or if it's extremely hot or cold it's a good idea to store those lithium ion batteries in a cool dry location and to kind of keep them topped off you don't want to go too much you know you definitely don't go to zero i try to keep them between 20 and 80 percent that's really where the battery is the happiest and you guys use pretty good cells right yeah we use uh samsung and panasonic lithium ion cells so okay that top of the line yeah that's the most important part of the bike most expensive part of the bike are the batteries and you really want to make sure you go with good quality when it comes to batteries on e-bikes part know? of the warranty we talked about the year long it's it's hard to offer that if your bikes don't you have good components and 
you know, again, some of these, like the mechanical brakes, or there's a limited range on the cassette there, but coming back to the smaller wheel size, you also get a mechanical advantage. So the motor's getting a mechanical advantage, you are as well. And then there's a little bit of a higher, steeper attack angle on folding bikes that have the 20 inch wheels, but with the four inch tires, that actually smooths things out uh, quite a bit. And you said, yeah, that's the most important thing on the bike, but I, I disagree. I think the most important thing on the bike, staying <laughs> hydrated, and I was like, where are the bottle cage bosses? And you said, well look we added this little little platform down here this is so clever you just kind of twist it in like that and then you've got a bottle cage or like a bottle holster or something like that that, is, that deserves a high yeah. five right there buddy <laughs> Thank that's you, sir. super clever right i just thought that was so cool there's been a lot on this bike that i was excited about um, going through it has standard 170 millimeter length uh, cranks it's got that bigger 52 inch or 52 mil teeth ugh, uh chain ring right there steel so it's a, a bit tougher and that balances out the small wheels so you get a comfortable cadence to pedal at they've got a usb charging port on this side so you can whether it's on the bike or not you can charge your phone you can kind of maintain some portable electronics and there's even one up here so full size usb uh, a port right there below the display and you can put your phone right in the middle and maybe have like a GPS going, especially for the travel scenario oh, yeah. where you don't know your way around. You got your phone there helping you. So I think that is just awesome. Um, and then maybe just to the display, I was going to go into that, but have I, have I missed anything? You want to add anything here? Jacob? No, just uh, maybe special thanks to Martin Luna for the idea for the bottle cage tab oh, in the sweet, bottom there. He's sweet. the one who came up with that. So it, I think yeah. that's great. I mean, it's yeah. a little thing, but you know, and there are, there are always, you can buy bags and you can do all that, but to have that little piece of metal there, it doesn't add much weight and it's just, it's very clever. Yeah, that was a, that's the idea. We try to try to come up with some nice details, you yeah, know. To it's a delighter. To that. You guys have been around since 2014, 2015 too, right? Yeah. That uh yep, 2014 is when we when we started and uh we came to market with our first bike in uh 2015 in in June. So, okay, well, yeah. Not bad. Uh, yeah, I'm... My, my partner Jerry's been in the in the e-bike world for probably 15 years or so. You wow. Know, so, quite a quite a quite a while so this is like the area yeah. for it there's a lot of socal companies that started here and a lot of good influence and, and stuff oh, happening yeah. oh, so yeah. considering you've been around that long i'm calling that out because you know elux they do sell through shops they got a handful like 35 shops in the u.s predominantly u.s company um so you could potentially go in and try these things go for a test ride uh, the flip side is you do ship direct. So there are a lot of people, they don't live near a shop and they're, they're buying online. And that's why I'm trying to go so, so deep here and highlight your good reputation and oh, history. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. We do, we do sell quite a bit across the States and, uh, you know, we're really big on customer service and taking good care of folks. If you, if you look on our website, you can see a lot of the reviews. We probably got like 80 or 90 reviews on the website and Very nice. we really, uh, believe that, uh, good quality components and really good service are what's going to be best for our company in the long run. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you on that and I do my best to do like reviews, but I know it's more of an in-depth overview. I haven't really owned this bike and tested it long term. So I've got the EBR forums and comments here. I, I welcome you to share your, your feedback on that. So the next step would be turning the, the bike on and, and showcasing that display a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put the kickstand down so you can rest your arm. Um, you got to make sure that it's on. Okay. So the battery is turned off right now, but that's kind of, that's a nice little, you know, if, if you're parked your bike and you don't want people messing with it, if you turn that battery off, they can't. So I'm going to turn it back on. So that's the first step. It's fairly reachable and the charging port is very clear of those cranks. So you're not going to get snagged and everything. I, I like that little like that input modular right there. It's, it's pretty cool. And then we press the power button on the display panel. This is also a pebble. What is it called? A uh, big stone. Big stone. Yes. <laughs> totally off pebble. <laughs> big stone display. Uh, it is backlit. So I, I press the power button, but if I tap it one more time, we get a little bit of backlighting going on and then the, the rear light activates back here so that's a blaze light with a single led there is no headlight on this bike but you know there's plenty of room on the handlebars to add one and it's kind of nice that that rear one is was added by the company we got power levels so uh power normal or eco and that's really how zippy the motor feels and so if you go to eco it's going to feel a lot smoother maybe not quite as startling if you're a new rider and it's also going to save some battery then we've got a little like power curve chart next to it speed it's in miles per hour right now but i'll show you how to change that in a second pedal assist it starts in zero which is a nice safety option from pedal assist but this is a more advanced bike so 
you know, the motor is live even at assist level zero, which means you could kind of bump that. So I used to get, get on the bike before I turn it on and then I turn it off before I hop off just so I'm not accidentally bumping that. Definitely turn the bike off before you go to fold it because you could, you know, kind of get, get a little bit of a, a rug burn or something if that tire bumps you and goes active. Uh, this is the voltage of the battery, 52.7 volts right now five bars so each bar represents 20 percent step it's not quite as precise as like a percentage or a 10 bar but you know it's it's kind of a standard in the industry really i see that in a lot of places and then down here trip if we press set it goes to timer for the trip and then odometer so we've got three different readouts there and then i think if we hold the minus key for a second we get walk mode which is pretty handy if you get a flat tire or maybe you're pushing up a steeper steeper hill or something like that you get lost it's just a nice thing to have when you've got a heavier e-bike uh the power button turns on the back lighting like we said and then i think if we hold set we go into all the different like menus and stuff so we can change the power level power normal or eco we can reset the trip meter here by holding minus for a second oh nope do you know how to reset it in just here? tap the minus button. just tap the minus button yeah. oh i was right. getting a little excited Thank you. I'm glad you're here. And then well, right here, we've got top speed. Right now, it says 62.3 miles per hour. It doesn't really go that fast. That's just sort of like the completely unlocked version. Yeah. This is a neat setting, though, because people, sometimes you're like, you don't want to go fast. You're like, 15 miles per hour is enough for me or my kids or whoever's riding it. We're going to set, you can go in here and you can lower that pretty easily. 24 inch tires. They did that because technically with the four inch tire on the 20 inch rim, it's about 24. That's right. So, so that your helps it speed to be, will be more accurate. If yeah. You, if you do it that way. This is, this is good to know. Uh, and then miles per hour or kilometers per hour. That's the menu four. We can change the units and then 48 volt for the battery. Yep. I'm getting the nod. And then we're back to the, the first one, the power level. So I hold set for a couple seconds. We're back where we've done it all. We've gone through the menus. We've deployed the kickstand. No major accidents, right? <laughs> There's only one thing uh, I should else? mention. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with this bike, it has a US, USB port, which I believe you've already mentioned. Oh, Yo, yeah. yes. But you, you have to on. actually activate it with this with this display. And you do that by holding set and plus down for a few seconds together. And the little icon comes on. Yeah. And it'll it'll turn back off when you shut the bike off. So, Thank you for... for yeah. Okay, and this other one's kind of active all the time. That though? one's on all the time. Yeah. Okay, so, so. I, yeah, I've seen that on a number of bikes. Do you know why they do that and make you manually do it? Is it just... I'm, I'm not sure why they do that. Phantom what? power draw, maybe? Yeah, I guess that's so somebody can't just hook up and steal your pan power. Yeah, pan, so. well, that would be terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Five cents worth of power gone. Yeah. I, I could have gone 24 miles, but now I can only go 23. You really, it's really amazing how far these bikes go. And again, like the smaller wheel form factor, but with the bigger tires, it gives you the stability and the comfort, but the power and like the, the mechanical advantage, that's so great. Uh, so I was going to just take it around and maybe ride up these, let's go off road a little bit here for a second, and then I'll come back to you and we can go for a ride. Okay. Do you have anything else to say about the new Newport? Because I haven't looked at it for a while. And uh, what's the new, what yeah. are the upgrades? This is a Newport Sport. And so we, we changed a few things with the, with the Newport model. We actually had to change the geometry of the frame hmm. so that we could uh, have a shock on the bike now. But uh, oh, yeah. So you'll notice that the shock is painted the same color as the frame. The bike's a little bit taller in the front, but uh, we've added a shock on the Sport model. We've added an adjustable gooseneck here. And we've also added uh, Schwabby Big Apple tires to Fantastic. the bike. So yeah. With the flat protection. So and a reflective sidewall. Yeah. You reflective basically sidewall. gave it a California lift, right? Yeah. You got the big front end going on. <laughs> exactly. Anyone you know, who's been to California knows a bro is knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, right? that's it. Exactly. So <laughs> this is cool. But uh, it still it still has a nice big open cockpit, so it's it's really good for for bigger guys and. And uh, you can still get the seat post really low, so it's great for gals that uh, want to be able to touch the ground while they're sitting on the seat as well. Do you have a step-through so. version of this too? Yes, we do. Okay, we do. Yeah, sweet. They, yeah, they have a high step and step-through on the Malibu as well. Yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna zip around this little circle here for a second and maybe show pedal assist to start off, and I'll be right back, JP. Okay, see you in a bit. So again, I'm in power, which is like the, the highest, like zippiest feeling one. It's gonna be the loudest as well. And then pedal assist level five, and I'm just gonna show you how responsive it is. Very nice. 
So it starts very quickly, and then there's a little bit of lag when I stop pedaling, but that's where you just override it with those brake levers here. Oh yeah, feeling pretty good off-road, even over these bumps. Oh boy, <laughs> start to drift a little bit. But I wanted to demonstrate that with the fat tires, these bikes feel very stable. Uh, and that's that's a big plus for me or, or anyone who's maybe in unfamiliar territory, which I've I've walked around here, but I haven't actually haven't actually cycled. Apparently there's like a BMX dirt track down there, like sheep hills or something like that, and then the ocean just a little bit further out. It's really beautiful. And now there's a bit of a climb in front of me, so instead of having to, to pump and really pedal hard, I can ease into that throttle right there, and then the bike will just carry me. Very nice. And you do hear some jingling, and that's just because the keys are zip tied right there. Really pretty quiet. And I'm not hearing a whole lot of chain bounce because there's no chain cover like some of the other bikes. They just have that plastic guide. There we go. Zipping along. I would definitely raise the saddle for myself. I have a longer inseam. Probably kind of max it out. That's one of the things with, with a single frame size, you don't have as much. Uh, as many options for extending and raising that saddle, but with again 31.8 millimeter seat post, that's thicker, and there are lots of options aftermarket if you want to add a really tall one or you get get yourself a thud buster or whatever. There's lots and lots of options on that. Okay, you gonna hop on? Yeah. JP's rocking the flip flops. <laughs> His rainbows, buddy. Busted rainbows. Yeah. <laughs> Not my rainbows, you know. <laughs> he said, "Oh, I'm going to work with Court. Yeah, I put on my flip flops. That's great." Yep, you know, we gotta be casual <laughs> when you live by the beach. So. That's true. Who knows where you end up with this trail <laughs> behind us. Heck yeah. So I think I just, yeah, I turned this one on. It's kind of the same deal. Throttle works immediately. Uh, let's go for it. All right. You can maybe cut across that dirt if you want to. Sounds good. I'll just follow from the side. All right, sounds like a winner. Beautiful. Nicely done, JP. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that suspension getting some nice action there. The off-road. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I love that it has lockout and preload adjust because you know JP's a bigger guy than me, and so he would kind of turn that preload to the right. Oh yeah, he's getting crazy now. Look at this. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a blast <laughs> once the camera gets rolling jp goes crazy i'll tell you what <laughs> non-stop fun <laughs> and we got this little hill let's see how he does oh he's going off road again we call this the tire cleaner that's right and with the smaller diameter no problem climbing that hill I'm a pretty big boy, so. Yeah, yeah. Tons of fun, tons of fun. Guys, I think that's about it. We actually rode here, which was super fun, and they're having like graduation parties and stuff. Just a beautiful day. I hope wherever you're at, you're having a beautiful day and you get a chance to go ride a bike. And JP, thank you so much for the opportunity to check this out. Yeah, thank you for it. We really appreciate what you do. It's so. tons of fun. Look at that. He's even got some like straw hanging onto the rack. <laughs> For the full written review on the Sierra Sport and many other Elux models, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. As always, have fun out there. I love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you next time.